Well, thank you very much, Chris and Priscilla. I'm coming to you from uh, Naro uh, Center here in Lira City this time. And of course, having concluded the 29th edition of the Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic, we're still into the area to discuss uh, a number of issues, a number of development with uh, different stakeholders. Among them is, of course, agriculture, security, and all those related that partly contribute towards uh, development. This time, I am joined by the regional, I mean, the resident district commissioner for uh, Lira District. And this is Ahamada Pinto, who will be just telling us more about how Lira City is doing and the district um, uh, to be more specific. So thank you very much for joining me, uh, Mr. Radisi. Yes. What can you tell us from the security perspective mm. of Lira City and district, let me be particular then? Okay, thank you um, uh, for, of course, uh, hosting me now. Uh, but I will specifically speak about Lira district because in terms of jurisdiction, I, uh, I am not a uh, part of the city. But you contribute. But I contribute. The yeah. majority of our people who are in the district work from the city, and uh, that's so you see that relationship. But in terms of, uh, in terms of security, uh, the, the, the district is, is peaceful, um, apart from some few isolated cases of uh, domestic violence, uh, that is always orchestrated with um, um, poverty levels, but also uh, around the harvesting time, you know, when, when um, uh, families harvest, the, 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 uh, the sometimes the husbands is, is take away the biggest share, and then that causes a problem if he's not able again to provide for home. So that contributes to domestic violence. And some few isolated cases, uh, of uh, individual thefts of uh, cattle, which we have actually been able to, to curtail. And actually, um, to be more specific, the cattle wrestling, let me say, though not in a bigger perspective, is what is synonymous with this area. Insecurity has always been exhibited uh, through robbery, among other things, and now Lira has been elevated to a city, although you do not take entirely that, but you contribute to it. So is Lira any different from other cities where we're seeing people vandalizing government infrastructure? Like in towns, you see the street lights have been vandalized, among others. Now, for, for the time I've been here, I have not had any case of, of vandalizing any government uh, infrastructure. Uh, we have worked well with, our, with my colleague in the city, been able to, uh, to, to build a very robust system where we are in communication and coordination between the district and the city. And so I would say that uh, uh, so far so good within the district and the city. Supervising government programs in some other areas we've seen that quite a challenge from the Youth Livelihood Fund, the EMIOGA, among others. How are those programs in Lira district? Yes, um, generally government uh, programs uh, like, um, like EMIOGA, uh, like uh, Uganda Women Empowerment uh, Fund, uh, like uh, YLP, uh, and then the parish development model. Uh, for example, specifically on yoga, we are performing very well uh, because the time I came, I assumed office on 1st of April, I was able to, to move around uh, to, 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 to look at the, the performance of the circles. Uh, but I would say that approximately 85% of the circles within Emioga are performing well, apart from some few circles that uh, we are trying to have a change in leadership because uh, the, the leadership of some, I think, five circles, uh, uh, some members ran away are not around. So we are looking at uh, uh, establishing a new leadership for those circles. Lira is one of the districts that had been placed into a spot of uh, young people not going to school. And uh, you would find them in trading centers as early as you know, seven at a time when they're supposed to be at school. Is that still happening? Yes, at the time I came, uh, that was a huge problem. But uh, we, we, we had a meeting with the, with the president uh, this year at Balerega State Lodge, and uh, he guided us. So after uh, after a few few days, I was able to to convene a meeting with our leaders 
And uh, because there were two hotspots where our young people, our children, were, um, were going on school days. For example, in the trading centers and two on the, day, on the markets, the cattle markets. I was able to, to inform our, the leadership of the markets and the, and, the, and the leadership of local councils that we do not want to see any school going child uh, going on a market, uh, going to any market on a, school, on a school day. And that happened in Amach and in Ayami, where we have the cattle market. So for now, the report we have is that uh, the, 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 the enrollment in, in most of the schools in, in that district now has really improved. We have the outbreak of Ebola in many other districts. I've seen preparations for the task force have uh, been installed. Mm. What preparations do you have as Lira in regards to that? Yes, we, yeah, thank you for that question. Yes, I know that we are, we, we are in a very uh, uh, suspicious time where every district must now prepare adequately. We were able to have our first uh, task force meeting uh, the other week where we were able to identify uh, uh, areas that we must work on. I was able to establish whether we have uh, PPEs, these are, I think, protect, uh, protective uh, gears yes. for our health workers, whether we have uh, our laboratorians, our, the, the, our laboratorians are prepared to, to, uh, to carry out any investigation at that, at that level. So we conclude on two things, that number one, uh, we write to, to the ministry to make sure that they equip our, our health facilities with PPEs, but also two, uh, to make sure that we can we internally conduct uh, a training, capacity building for most of our laboratorians so that they're able to know um, uh, how to handle the, the, the case of Ebola, if any, uh, if any alert is, is made. But also two, generally to continue engaging our people on media so that they get to know but also adjust, the, adjust our, our ways of, of doing things, like uh, uh, we call them SOPs, I think, uh, in terms of, of no hugging, no shaking hands, keeping a distance. Uh, that is a continuous, continuous messaging that we've been able to make within the district and I think within the city. Because uh, whatever happens in the district affects the city, and whatever happens in the city affects the district. Yeah, for the short time we've been here, we can notice that this is a rainy season, mm -hmm. and uh, this region is one of those that produce uh, corn, let me say maize, uh, sorghum, among others. But from a government perspective, mm -hmm. what are the preparations that the farmers are supported in this area mm -hmm. to see, like how the president has always mentioned it, switch from subsistence farming to commercial, and it is you who has. Uh, direct uh, coordination with messages mm. to on behalf of government. How are you making sure these people get the support? Yes, uh, number one is that, um, like I said, we, uh, we, we still have a uh, group of our farmers that are still cultivating as if you're living in a million years ago. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's also very embarrassing. Uh, but also our farmers, uh, some few farmers have shown uh, have shown uh, interest in adopting new means of doing agriculture, uh, but also some of the farmers listening to us have been able to appreciate that um, there are some crops that we've been able to grow for the last uh, a thousand years, but have not made us out of poverty. They have not moved them out of poverty, uh, so they have been able to pick on our on our message that please engage now with coffee, adopt coffee growing, because that's the, the, the biggest way we can move out of poverty in Lango. Because my, when, when you do um, a calculation on average, majority of our people here have four acres and below. They don't have like some parts of the country where they could own 10, 20 acres. Here people have small acres. Um, like we, so we growing is the way to go. We have the debate friction, especially in the communities, with the government's parish development model mm. uh, funds. Mm. Uh, people are saying some districts have, have received, I mean, local councils have received what 
they intended to and others have not. What is on ground in Ilira? Have people received their money and are there preparations that the, is that ample way systematic well in the well-known channel that this money will be used for their own development? Yes, um, th th there was a challenge on the price movement model that did not just start from the district. Of course, we had the um, controlled way of one how to, to use the money. We had no information about the about the uh, how to access the money from the central government. So information was coming in piecemeal. They would send the money and then they would, they would put a caveat: don't touch. Let it be there. Wait for our, wait for our instruction. So then uh, the instruction came that. Um, use the money in this category and for the, on behalf of the district we were able to we were able to to dispense that money to our to our to, to the circles but again with instruction that yes send money to the circles but do not do not first touch it wait for what for our instruction so on behalf of the district our, our i can able to say that um uh, all circles got their, 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 their money for the last... Okay, RDC, I will give you 30 seconds to say your last words to Ugandans and people of Lira. Yeah, I just want to, first of all, thank you, NTV, for um, this interview, but also to thank the people of Lira District and uh, thank His, His Excellency the President for uh, appointing us, the young people, and, and come here to be, to be part of, 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 the, of the big approach of uh, working for government but doing good work and making sure that uh, government remains strong and we do good work for our people. Well, well, thank you very much for your time with us as well. The RDs of uh, Lira District just giving us insights of what the developments are like in relation to what their mandate is, supporting communities and seeing that people transform from what they used to understand in the past and thinking forward. For time reasons, I come back to the studio from Lira. Was I edible?